live episode of Vlogmas. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad to see you here in the chat. And if you are watching later, welcome to the replay. You can watch the recording too, that's fine. <laughs> Feel free to chat if you're live or put comments if you are watching the replay because I do check the comments. So you won't miss out. All right, friends, welcome to Vlogmas. I am going to take a sip of my coffee. Let me know if you have anything cozy and warm to drink and what you're working on while you watch. I would love to know what projects you are up to. So let me know while I take my sip of coffee because we're live and that's what happens. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Someone's getting around to Socktober. <laughs> Happy knitting. All right, well, I have a couple of housekeeping things to cover real quick, and then we're going to get into some fun. We have spinning, I will answer spinning questions, and I'd love to get some ideas and help deciding what to do for my next weaving project. So let's start with a couple quick things about housekeeping. First of all, I want to apologize because there is something that was unforeseen that has come up as a result of me doing Vlogmas Live. And that is that we don't always have good live captions. I, I had a little conversation about this with uh, my patrons in the Discord chat. And in my opinion, there's absolutely no excuse for a platform as massive and well-funded as YouTube to not have quality captioning on live streams. I, I understand that some people are getting a captions not available message. So I've checked with some other YouTube creators. They've also been getting that message. I've gone into the back end of the YouTube stuff. Everything I can control has captions turned on. But it seems that YouTube is having some platform glitchiness right now. And um, like I said, there's no excuse for that, <laughs> really. It's an accessibility issue. And everything that's under my control to take care of that during live streams is done. YouTube needs to get their act together in that regard. So um, it used to be a quick way to contact YouTube if you tweeted at them. But I've left Twitter since it got invaded by the muskrat. So. I don't have that avenue of accessing <laughs> YouTube support, but I'm going to find a way and I will be messaging them today. If any of you know how to contact YouTube, I will encourage you to do so because even if you're not, you know, if you don't personally need captions, people in our community do, and I think we should speak up for them. So that's what I'm going to say about that. I'm a little upset about it, if you can tell, but we're going to take a deep breath now. <sighs> If you come back later and watch the recording, I know it's not the same if you want to be here to give input on projects and things like that, but maybe we could do a couple of polls in the community chat. And that way, if you can only watch the replay after the captions have caught up, you'll still get a chance to put some input. And if you're one of those who has a spinning question and you are unable to watch the live because of the captioning issue, then send me a message. Put it in the in the comments and I'll I'll get to it in the next one and I will be on the lookout for that. All right. All right. So that's that. All right. So today what are we up to? I am I have finished a weaving project and I am planning my next weaving project. So I want to talk about that real briefly and show you what my ideas are and I would love for you all to give me your thoughts on what I should do next. And then we are going to pull up some more Shetland and spin some Shetland. So don't worry, even if you're not a weaver, I know that not everyone in my audience weaves and not everyone in my audience weaves on the same kind of equipment. And you know, there's very different things on one type of loom than another. So I will keep things very general and broad and bring you along with me. But I know that you can all have a preference for like visual patterns and color and texture, I know that you can all do that. So let's talk first. I'm gonna put my coffee down about my finished object. 
I wove this with um, my floor loom. T I'm calling her Tina. She's a Leclerc Fanny. I don't love the name Fanny. <laughs> For reasons, we have an international audience. So some people are going to be like, oh, that's a cute girl's name. And some people are going to be like, so uh, I call her Tina because there was some, she came from a school and there was some graffiti on her that was a pencil. It says, I heart Tina. And so it's a story of young, immature love. <laughs> um, so this is what I have finished. This is like a, it's like a wide scarf or a, a wrap maybe. So this is what it looks like. And it was a lot of fun. It's finished because it's washed, <laughs> but it's not finished because I haven't clipped all of the threads yet. I don't think it needs too much pressing, but the detail on this, this is what I mean about color and texture. It's the detail on this is very cool. And I did put what pattern this is down in the description. If you wanna find it, it was part of a four pattern collection. It was with just yarn and it was designed by Ariana E. Funk. This is drop, drop draw. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, drop draw, which is a Swedish variation of huck lace. But if you look, the way it was threaded, it, it opened up on these diagonals to let this thicker yarn kind of pop through. And so this one was doubled and you can see where it kind of goes along here. The orange is doubled. Um, and it's a little thicker. And so then when you finish it, it pops up and you can see, look at all this texture. Isn't that so cool? You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of bubble wrap. And I just want to like <laughs> sit here and squish each little fuzzy nub. <laughs> um, but this was a lot of fun. It helped me get to know Tina. And um, I was struggling a little bit with some rhythm and moving her around. She's very quirky. She's the old version of the... Uh, Leclerc Fanny. So she doesn't have like the shed regulator and stuff. So she's a little fussy, but we're getting to know each other and that's okay. <laughs> so anyway, that is my first, and here you can see like how it drapes and everything. Oh, we're getting some shingle bells. <laughs> shingle bells. <laughs> um, so what's next? I need to weave something else. Let's talk about that. And I printed some pictures because Usually I don't have to worry about that because I can just pop it up here when I edit later, but we're not editing later. So I have pictures that I'll just hold up here. <laughs> we'll make it work. All right, I want to make some mug rugs. I don't have coasters in my living room. Also coasters are great because you can do a whole run of them and give them away for gifts. And they're a really cool, quick project. So, oh, what makes okay i have a question i'm going to interrupt myself and address this what makes a loom finicky good question i will say what makes this loom finicky but there are a ton of things that could make any loom finicky so because this one is old the wood has dried settled shifted moved around the bolts have loosened up so like everything also, this model is a collapsible loom, so the the warp in the back there's a there's a thing that sticks out to hold the warp. It can close up. Basically, the loom can fold up, and so there's a there's a hinge here that allows part of it to go in and out, and so that part's kind of rickety, and it doesn't quite square things up nicely. And so when you're weaving, you want everything to pack at the same time but she's a little crooked, so we had to address some of that, and just various quirks. <laughs> so, I mean, a loom is a machine, and any machine can have personality <laughs> and issues <laughs> and quirks, <laughs> just like spinning wheels can. Um, she's probably from the 1960s. So I think anyone who's been around from the 1960s at this point might have a little quirkiness about them. I say that with love <laughs> for all my friends who have 1960-something birthdays. <laughs> um, all right, so these are some of the ideas I'm thinking of for what to do next. And 
this is one idea I have. I will show you my basket of yarn. And then I want people to vote. We're going to go number one or number two. Okay, here we go. This is the yarn that I have pulled out. I basically went stash diving and pulled out everything I had that was in any way red, green, and then there's some white in there as well. It's a mix of hand spun as well as thrifted yarn, although all the thrifted stuff is, if it's not alpaca, it's wool, so it's all natural materials. Um, so I have some Laniloft in here and some other commercial things. Oh, I do have some wool ease, which is a blend, but anyway, so these are my colors. It's just very Christmassy, festive, holiday colors, red, white, and green. So these are the two mug, rub, mug rug options. The first one is by Jennifer Kwong. They are called Palm Springs Cocktail Carpets. Cocktail carpets, isn't that fun? This was in Handwoven. It was in one of the issues from last spring. It was a 2023, I think it might've been like March or May. And this is what they look like. So just reimagine this with instead of that orangey yellow color in there we're going to change that out maybe for green and the black will become red and the white will stay white or something like that so you can imagine it with christmasy colors and i can do different combinations of christmasy colors as i weave each one i can switch out the weft and do different colors and i thought that would be a lot of fun so that is the first option and then Here's another image of those. And don't worry, I'm not showing any pattern things. And I do have the link for handwoven in the description. Um, so, yes, yes. Okay, people are mentioning about <clears throat> this. This part, I think, is so cool. The way that these threads play with each other to make these neat little patterns. I kind of picked this one because I thought they looked like little snowflakes. but I think they could also look like little wreaths if instead of red, I did the the black threads, I made them green. That could be pretty cool. But I just love, these are very simple to weave. Like they're, they're not complex. They just look complex because we're changing colors and there's a tiny bit of little fanciness, but overall they're pretty simple. All right, so then the next one is, this is from, Bound Weave Projects, Weft Faced Weaving for Beautiful Rugs. And this isn't a full rug, this is a mug rug. <laughs> so they're little. Um, this is also with hand woven, and I also have that link down below. If you wanna check that out. But this is what they look like. And so this is a type of weaving called, I checked on the pronunciation for this. It's K R O K B R A D. Wait, G D. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I say this right because I've heard different people say it different ways. It is a form of bound weave and it is a. There it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. I don't want to show the whole the whole um, instructions because that part is, you have to pay for that. Um, and I can't just throw that on the internet. So there we go. Okay, so it's K-R-O-K-B-R-A-G-D. And I've heard some people say croak brag and I've heard some people say croak brad. And I asked my friend who is Norwegian and she sent me a voice memo and I've been practicing for my Norwegian friends. You'll have to tell me how I did. But I think technically it's Krok Bragd. And there's the G and D in there. So <laughs> how am I going to pronounce it as an English speaker? I don't know. But I think it's fun to put the G and D together. So I'm going to try Krok Bragd and go with that. So please forgive me. <laughs> um, but my friend does have a YouTube channel. Her name is Christine, and you can check out her channel if you'd like. It's Christine Bike. She has some really amazing deep dives. If you're into textile history and uh, like 
deep dives into the textile industry. Amazing channel. So uh, yes, go check out Christine Vike. Awesome channel. Okay, so shout out for my friend who helped me with my Kirkbrecht pronunciation. We'll see how I did. <laughs> I'll have to ask her to give me a grade. <laughs> F minus or A plus for effort. <laughs> so this is the other option of mug rugs. I thought these were just so beautiful. And imagine these with varying, not just the three colors, but different shades of the three colors, like different shades of green, maybe some darker green playing off some lighter green. And, you know, oh, it could be beautiful, right? It could be so amazing. The thing is, Crook bragged takes forever. <laughs> you basically have to weave three times back and forth to build up one row of the colors. And so it takes a while. But it could be fun to watch as these develop. So let me know if you'd like to see. Number one is, the number one option is uh, the, <laughs> what are they? The cocktail carpets. So that's number one. And then number two is the crook bragged. And that is what they look like. Okay, why not both? I probably might actually end up weaving both, but which one first? That's the question. All right. So I want you all to just put in there number one or number two, whatever you like. And then I'm also going to check in on the comments later. So if you are re-watching this later, you'll have a chance to vote. Put number one or number two, and I will go and tally them up, and we'll see who wins, who goes first. So we've got number one and number two. So, all right, let's get to some spinning. I have finished the first Vlogmas spin, this one. That's the one we did on, what is today? Today is Sunday. We did this one Friday. <laughs> but I have a basket of more colors to choose from. So let's pick one. Should I close my eyes and reach in? I think I need to do that because we're voting for the weaving pattern. It might be confusing if we're also voting for yarn colors. So. I am going to shake this up a little. Excuse you. I'm going to shake this up a little bit. I'm not looking. I'm just going to reach in and grab one. And today's spin. Let's go down to the bottom. Who are you? What do we have? Ooh, pretty. It's like a rich kind of a orangey. It's a cinnamon color. It's like a, a deep cinnamon color. It's beautiful. To the spinning wheel. <laughs> All right. I am going to adjust the camera. So if you are sensitive to camera movements, I want you to close your eyes, look away, and I'll tell you when we're done because we are going to go uh, over and down with the camera today. I have a fancy setup so you can see the wheel better. Here we go. Close your eyes. All right. You're looking at my floor now, and we're going to adjust this over. Oh, you can see me over there. That's how I'm keeping track of the chat. I would see how organized I am today. We're going to go right like that. Ta-da! Okay. I hope this is a good setup. I hope you can see as I'm spinning, and I'm going to take another sip of my coffee. Okay, and I have you all set up down here. And I have my hair clippy so I can put my hair up because, you know, when we're spinning, we're working out, kind of. <laughs> oh, we're getting some snow today and the heater came on and so it's getting warm because I am in a room that just gets kind of warm. So... Oh dear, this is making me nervous. I'm going to move my coffee. We'll put that over there. The organizations of live streams. All the organizing. This is an antique spinning chair that my one of my kiddos got me. And I love it. It's amazing. 
I'm going to put, aha, there we go. Put that up there. And I can see the chat. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So let's go ahead and thread. I am on a very small whirl. I checked. It's not the smallest, but of the two whirls that come with the Shacked Matchless, it is the smallest of those two. Why am I on such a small whirl? Well, because I do plan to weave with this. So I do want it to be a little bit high, high twist in the singles. Also, um, because I can go faster and I have quite a bit to spend for this month. Um, you know, so let's get it done, right? Let's get it done. Okay, so I'm going to open the floor to spinning questions. Who has a spinning question for me? Let me have it. I'm going to actually do a little adjusting here. So that might be the first. Ah. Something's holding us up. There we go. Woo! Now the tension's too loose. Oh, I know why it was so strange. I had it set up for plying from when I plied it, not when I spun it. So if you're curious about what I'm struggling with, I was treadling, but it wasn't turning as fast as it should. And so that meant something was too tight somewhere. I loosened it, and then it was too loose, and I didn't have any take up. <clears throat> so now we're in the middle. <laughs> but it's a little bit. I want to get it where I like it. Aha. Uh -huh. That's where I like it. Okay. So let's see. Questions about spinning cotton. Cotton is a whole different beast. I then wool. I uh I I actually really enjoy spinning cotton, but I have to be in the mood to spin cotton, if that makes any sense. I think that one of the things that I needed to adjust when I first started spinning cotton after spinning and getting used to how wool spins is that cotton doesn't have bounce. It's less forgiving than wool because wool has crimp and it basically becomes springy. When you have crimp and you twist it up, it has a little bounce to it. Cotton doesn't. Also, cotton really absorbs twist. You can put some twist in cotton and it'll just kind of take up that energy and not really bounce back in the way that wool does. So for cotton, my best tips, treat it like it's a whole new spinning experience because it's going to feel brand new. So give yourself the grace of a beginner. Give it more twist than you think it needs and spin um, like with whatever ratio you have on your wheel, whatever, if you're on an e-spinner or a spinning wheel, put it on whatever gives you the most twist that you can get because <laughs> you'll need it. So those are some of my best tips for cotton. Okay, looking for more questions. Um, have I ever spun East Frisian fleece? You have the opportunity to get some. Oh, cool. I don't think I have. I don't think I have, but it's my understanding that that would be like a medium wool. Maybe a little more coarse. I would love for you to spin some and come back and tell us all about it. <laughs> oh, here's a question. How does choose between S and Z twist? Excellent question. So S and Z twist. Let me explain what that is, what that means. That has to do with the direction that the twist is going into the yarn. So if you look at a spinning wheel, if it's turning clockwise, we call that Z twist. And if it's spinning counterclockwise, we call that S twist. And the way that I remember that is if you're going to draw the letter Z over the, like in the air with your finger, over the top of your spinning wheel, 
This also works with a spindle or the flyer on an e-spinner. If you draw the letter Z across the top, you go that direction. So that is the direction for a Z twist, and that is clockwise. And then if you draw the letter S, it goes that direction, counterclockwise. <laughs> so how do you choose? <clears throat> how do you choose if you want clockwise or counterclockwise twist in your yarn? That is up to the spinner. The sort of standard default for general knitting yarn is that you will spin your singles with Z twist and you will ply to finish your yarn with S twist. For some people, that's perfection. For some people, as they work on their projects, their yarn becomes very splitty and their needle starts to go through the plies and it's frustrating. Same with crochet. Sometimes you can get very splitty yarn. Well, it's not necessarily that the yarn is splitty. It could be, but oftentimes it's because the way that you're working, if you're working especially in the round, like for sleeves or socks or something like that, you are either adding or subtracting twist from that yarn, which makes the plies sort of separate because they're losing some of their ply twist. So the thing that you can do to compensate for that is to finish your yarn in the other direction, which means if you have yarn finished with S twist, as, or S ply, then you start crocheting a, a sock and you're going around and around and around and oh my goodness, the yarn's falling apart. Your, your hook is going between the plies. It's so frustrating. Try spinning with S twist and plying with Z twist and see if that works better for you. There's sort of a saying in the community that you should finish your yarn with S twist if you're going to knit or Z twist if you're going to ply. That's sort of a general saying, but as we know, there's always exceptions. <laughs> So right now I'm using Z, if you're wondering. Um, there's always exceptions, right? Some people use different methods. If you wrap up a center pull ball and you pull it from, you know, depending on how you're pulling it, it can be also adding or removing twists, depending. So I would say if you don't like what you have, if it's splitty, do the opposite. And if you do like what you have and it's good, let it be. <laughs> That's not so much of spinning. There's not an exact 100% all the time answer. I mean, unless it's like something that's very specifically related to like the laws of physics, you know, such as drop spindles will drop. I mean, that is physics, right? We can't do anything about that. Although I am curious if I could ever get a ticket to go to outer space, I would bring spindles and see what it's like to spin yarn up there. Someone did do an experiment. Actually, it was really fascinating. I don't, I don't know what the link was. I have it saved somewhere. Um, textiles in space. Pretty cool. I'm off track. Let's do one more question. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, tips for when you... S okay, you're getting a secondhand spinning wheel for Christmas. Is there, are there any tips for when I start? There are no local groups. You'll have to use YouTube. Wendy, congratulations on getting a wheel. That's amazing. Welcome fiber friend. So the first thing I would say, I have a video. It is uh, basically how to get used to your spinning wheel for very, 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 very beginners. And it kind of walks you through the steps that I would do if I was in the room with you telling you how to get used to your spinning wheel. And I, I think it's pretty good. A lot of people have given feedback that it helped them a whole lot uh, to follow that video when they got their brand new wheel. So I would go check that out. Aside from that, I would say just be patient with yourself. I think that's one of the hardest things, especially for adults who are learning new things. I think we often have such high standards that we get frustrated when our work looks like beginner's work, but we are beginners and it should look like beginner's work if we are starting something brand new. And I think that a lot of that just, you know, beginner's mind, but that, that willingness to accept whatever results are 
and be curious about why things came out that way, why things are the way they are, doing things on purpose to be wrong just to see where the line is between what you feel is right for you and what's not going to be right for you, exploring the boundaries of the craft, and just letting all of that be an exploration rather than, does my yarn look good? <laughs> you know, give yourself that freedom to just explore and not be hard on yourself and don't judge your, your first output as if you're comparing to someone who's been spinning for years and years and years, you know, because that's just not the same thing. So I hope that was inspirational. <laughs> You'll have to let me know. <laughs> but yes, that is, um, I think for, for anything, uh, anything new you're learning, whether it's spinning or weaving or any new, craft anything you do with your hands our muscles have memory but if they haven't done it before they have no memory of it you know like insert Gandalf saying I have no memory of this place except it's the fine muscles in your fingers saying that so <laughs> give them a chance to explore oh boy <laughs> oh thank you so much Amanda don't forget to like subscribe and comment we have to say those YouTube -y things. It would be nice if YouTube, you know, reciprocated with good captioning and live streams. Just saying. That brought us full circle, didn't it? All right, friends. I'm going to put the camera up for one second so that we can have our blessing. And if you don't like camera movement, close your eyes because here we go. We're moving. We're moving. We're on the floor. We're tipping up. We're coming back down. <laughs> Oh, almost. We're crooked. Okay. We're, <laughs> I'm moving it a little more. I can't stand it being crooked like that. That's going to make me nuts. Okay, there we are. We're back. All right. So, <laughs> okay. We've got one more question about how can I control the thickness of the yarn you spin? That's an actually pretty complicated question, more complicated than you think. So I'll leave you with this for that. Your twist, like how much twist is coming in there, you need less of it if your yarn is thick, you need more of it if your yarn is thin. Next, your draft. If you're pulling more fibers out of your fiber supply, you'll have thicker yarn. And if you pull less fibers out, you'll have thinner yarn. So the whole process of spinning is that dance between how much twist your equipment is providing, whether that's a spindle or a spinning wheel or an e-spinner, how much twist that equipment is providing versus how much fiber you are providing. And in the middle, there's this beautiful, beautiful dance that creates yarn. And it's the coolest thing. <laughs> so that's probably not a very specific answer, but it's my favorite answer. So <laughs> I do have some videos about um, getting consistent singles. That might be a good video for you to go check out and um, hopefully it'll help. So what is our blessing for today? I don't know if, I don't know if Mark is with us. Okay. Yesterday, or not yesterday, in the last live stream, Mark was with us. I asked for a blessing and then I didn't give enough time for a reply because there's a lag where I'm doing stuff and then a, it takes a minute for the chat to catch up. You're welcome in the Netherlands. <laughs> um, so blessing, blessing. If Mark doesn't pop one in here real quick, I am going to come up with a blessing for us for today. So let's see. Ah, I have one. And it's relevant to our topics of today. So here we go. Happy Vlogmas, happy spinning, and may your S twist and Z twist <laughs> never split your yarn. <laughs> That's the blessing for today. So happy spinning, everyone. Um, I do have links in the description for my 
for my shop and then also for the patterns I talked about today. Keep letting me know if you want the pattern for my weaving project to be, this is number, ah, can't show that. Number one or number two, number one or number two. Let me know what you prefer and that'll be one of my projects for this December. All right, friends, I will see you in the next one. Heavy spinning. Now it's the awkward part where I try to close my, <laughs> where I try to close my stream, right? <laughs>